Cassidy Smith, and we are in the studio today with Bill Zinn, who is a um, choir teacher you all may have heard of, um, and he has been teaching for over 30 years, and he's retiring this year. Um, so how are you doing? I'm doing real well, thanks, Cassidy. Nice. All right, so let's just start from like the very beginning. Um, when did you first realize that you had like this passion for music? I've been musical my whole life. Um, my mother was a music teacher and my father was a minister and so music was just a part of our lives all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I sang as a child in the church choir and uh, played in band in uh, elementary school and junior high. Um, and I've been involved in music since I can remember. Sweet. And like, when did that lead into you specifically wanting to like teach a choir? Did it find you or did you find that passion on your own? Well, um, it kind of came around from the side. Um, I was always musical um, and I had been thinking about career choices and when I went to college I was thinking I, I knew I wanted to be a teacher and um, in addition to the um, education program I had to declare a second major because education itself at Beloit College where I went to school in Wisconsin was not a major per se. So you had to have a major and an, uh, go through the certification program. So they kind of pair with each other. They kind of paired with mm -hmm. each other. And it turned, I, I, I got involved in the music program at college right away. And I'd been in the high school choir. And I'd just been musical, playing the guitar and everything else my whole life. Um, and so I paired those two things and that's when it started to come together that I would be a music teacher. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, in, in your education training you go through classroom teaching uh, experiences mm -hmm. and all of that kind of thing. But as yeah. I got into my internship for my master's degree, I was uh, directing bands and choirs. Yeah, and so um, what type of like big steps did you have to take in order to like become a choir teacher other than doing that like training in class? Well, um, of course, uh, I continued as a part of the music program in college. Uh, I studied conducting, mm -hmm. so I was given responsibility for conducting um, a little bit of a concert or two um, during my school years there, um, and I'd always been interested in leadership. Um, I, uh, in putting it together, it was kind of, um, it, it just sort of it flowed to mm -hmm. where it needed to be. Um, as I was going to school in Wisconsin, knowing that I would want to come at least visit California at one point in time, yeah. I learned that there was reciprocity between the certification program at Beloit College in Wisconsin and in the state of California. So when I got here um, in uh, August of two, uh, 1980, um, I uh, got on the substitute teaching lists and uh, in addition to that I found that there are some things I had to take a couple classes at Sac State that I did to what classes um, it was there was a special ed class I had to take and I had a drug and alcohol prevention kind of thing yeah that you had to take to get sort of the certificated uh, it's teaching certificate for the yeah. state of California and then after you did that, what was like your next step? Like, did you go straight to a school from there or did you kind of like look for a school that you'd want to work at? Well, I was substitute teaching and uh, at the beginning of the 1980s, it was mm -hmm. just after the uh, Prop 13 time. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of cut packs starting to take effect. And so the jobs were not out there. So, but I became very highly regarded as a substitute teacher in the music departments in Sac, uh, Sac City and in San Juan Unified School Districts mm -hmm. where they knew that they could um, have me as their sub and actually get something musical done instead of just you know, crowd management. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what, if, what has been like your most, one of your, some of your most memorable like teaching moments either in Sacramento or in Davis? Well, there have been quite a few. Um, I think uh, in singling out um, my elementary school music pr uh, program, um, I was involved in a district honor choir and had my kids involved in that. Um, just being in the classroom in the inner city and inspiring kids to enjoy music and find um, fulfillment in music was fun. Um, 
At, Dave, at Sacramento High School, um, I was there uh, from 1993 until 2003, and in the fall of 1999, I received a phone call and was invited to bring my choirs to Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. To sing um, in front of the White House for the commemoration of the 200th year of the occupation of the White House. Oh, wow. So 200 years after John Adams moved into the White House as the first occupant, we were there singing in front of the um, White House itself. That must have on been like really It was really, really something amazing. else. Yeah. It was amazing. And that really made... Um, it really, of course, lit up all of my students and their parents. And um, with the help of Sacramento County and all the fundraising that the parents did, we were able to raise fifty thousand dollars in four months so that we could go and do that. That's really amazing. Yeah. Um, when did you? What What was the whole? I guess. Um, how did you move from Sac High School? Like, what What made you move to Davis High? Well, um, the. Uh, Sacramento City School District had, uh, Sacramento High School in particular, had mm -hmm. received funding from the state for a number of years to do research to bring up test scores and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And um, it was getting to the end of that point in time and the state was noticing that our test scores had not gone up, mm. but the money had been spent. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, state was threatening to come in and take over the school and instead um, the school, the superintendent actually called me personally oh, wow. to ask me what I thought about the visual and performing arts being the center of Sacramento High School. And I was intrigued. And so um, he and a couple of the other folks from the visual and performing arts program, uh, Patrick Stratton was my drama teacher uh, colleague there. He's a resident here in Davis. Mm -hmm. And um, we met with the superintendent, Jim Sweeney, and then with um, Kevin Johnson, mm -hmm. who was kind of spearheading this. Kevin w was a graduate of Sacramento High School in 1984 or mm -hmm. something around that time. Um, so they came and spoke with us and um, then brought it to the broader community of the Sacramento High School staff. And over time, it came, it turned into you're not doing it right, we're going to change things. Mm. And so uh, that's when Sacramento High School was closed oh. in January of 2003. Um, and it's a, it was the second oldest high school west of the Mississippi. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. And we were, uh, I was uh, the media representative for the staff um, in opposition to that closure. After the superintendent came to, and invited me to be a part of it, I said, that's not what we, sh we need. That We need help, but we don't need to be taken over. Yeah. Um, so then I got a call from a friend of mine who said, if you're interested, there's a job available someplace that you might want to follow up on. Mm -hmm. And so I took a day off and just drove to Davis and as I drove across the causeway, it was a gray, rainy, nasty day. And as I drove across the causeway, the skies cleared and the sun lit up. And there, there was Davis glowing in front of me. <laughs> it was quite a thing. And I had an opportunity to visit with um, David Murphy, the superintendent, that mm -hmm. day and visit the campus for Davis High School. And I submitted my application. And uh, so um, I came here, and Davis kind of saved my career because um, I was not going to go along with what the, the school district had in mind for da Sacramento mm -hmm. High School. Yeah. And when you came to Davis, um, as people may or may not know, you are the director for the DHS Jazz Choir, which mm -hmm. I happened to be in until mm -hmm. I graduated last year. Right. Um, did you immediately go to Jazz Choir, or were you part of, like, a, was there another choir that you were, like, running at DHS? Well, the position that I auditioned for, or that I interviewed for, was a co combined program of the Holmes Junior High Choir mm -hmm. and um, the High School Concert Choir, Jazz Choir, and Essentials of Music. Mm -hmm. And so when I um, first was uh, accepted to teach at uh, Davis High School, um, those are the classes I took. Jazz Choir has been something that's in, been mine uh, in my wheelhouse ever since, and it was my first opportunity to teach junior high school since my student teaching it and it really woke me up to the enthusiasm of junior high kids <laughs> and I've really grown to love them. Really, that's really great. Um, 
What are you going to do now after that, since you're retiring this year? Do you have any plans for retirement? Well, I have plans, but can I go back to my excitement about um, uh, Davis High School? Oh, of course, yeah. Um, um, I've had the uh, pleasure of collaborating with Gwyneth Bruch mm -hmm. in uh, presenting the musicals now for 10 years. We started our first collaboration with Les Miserables. We had the people that could do that at that time, and we've um, worked together for 10 years and had a great run. I'm really proud of all of the things that I've done in the theater program yeah, with I Gwyn. I remember I saw, I saw Les Mis mm -hmm. when it was performing, and it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I was only like... I was I was super young at the time, but I still was like, how can a high school put something like this on? This is like amazing. Like the sets, the singing, right. acting, everything was live just, orchestra. Yeah, orchestra. everything was just yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And then there's uh, my accomplishments with the junior high choirs. I've, uh, my favorite moment um, the first year was when we went to Golden Empire Music Festival, and my brand new little seventh grade choir just unchanged voices, just a sweet little group of kids who are, of course, now in their late 20s. <laughs> um, at festival, my uh, friend and colleague, Travis Rogers, who was at the time directing the choirs at Napa High School, was mm -hmm. my clinician that day. And he, instead of coming up and talking to my choir and telling them, as uh, is usual, what, you know, you, here's what you did really well, here's what you could do better. He, he just said, I'd like to do a play-by-play. -play. Will you sing that song again with Mr. Zinn? And while you're singing, I'll talk over it. And he did a play-by-play -play -play and told them all the wonderful things they were doing, how, wine the, how fine the uh, accompaniment was. Mr. Zinn's conducting was very clear. Your voices are sweet. It was just the most amazing moment. It's so memorable to me. That's amazing. Yeah. And then um, the jazz choir was invited, um, like my high school choir from Sacramento, we were invited to go to Honolulu to sing for Veterans Day 2006. Mm -hmm. And so that lit up the parents at Davis High School and we went and did that. Um, and um, we've been on tours in jazz choir to New York, Chicago. We've been to New Orleans four times now. We've done Disneyland a bunch of times and um, it's just been really exciting to see how um, we can grow the show choir culture, not just at <coughs> Davis High School, but now we're connecting with other schools in the area, and I had a festival just yeah. this year. All right, um, we're about almost done, but okay. um, any takeaways or any like advice that you can give um, students that want to join choir or want to pursue a musical career or even more specifically want to become a choir teacher? Do you have any like advice for them? Mm -hmm. Well, um, become a part of something that's musical. Mm -hmm. If you don't actually do it, you're not going to achieve, you're not gonna get there, so be involved. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of opportunities in Davis. I keep kidding my kids that, you know, there's nothing to do in Davis except you're just busy all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, people go away from school and then they go and do that and that and that and that. Oh, private voice lessons, then they go and take their lessons on piano and everything else. Mm -hmm. So get musically involved um, and uh, explore the possibilities op open to you um, in musical theater, in choral work, encourage your superintendent and the school board to implement the elementary school music program that was approved three or four years ago. Um, and uh, then for the becoming a teacher or going on into a career, um, one of the, we went last year to New York, you mm -hmm. were on that trip, yeah. and my former student, Tia um, Altine from D D yeah, Sacramento High School, was at that time in the cast for Aladdin, playing on Broadway. Really and she, amazing. And, yeah, and she went, she, she said to the group after the performance, it's not where you go, it's where you're going. Mm -hmm. She was given a scholarship to Brigham Young University as a young African-American woman. It might not have been her first choice, but she got a free ride to go to Brigham Young University. And so she went and got the training and then kept going and went where she wanted to go and ended up on Broadway. And now she and another one of my former Sacramento High School students are in the new touring company of Hamilton. And serious? I'm going to go see them on May 12th. That in is amazing. Costa Mesa. See, like anything is possible. Everything like, if you just is possible. Set your mind to it. That's absolutely right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Zinn. It's great seeing you again. Um, this has been in the studio. Thank you so much.